Welcome back. In this video, we'll be ending things off on the firewall by talking about NAT. So we'll be looking at source NAT, destination NAT, as well as the redirect action on a marketing device. So let's get into it. All right, so we'll be labbing this in an Eve topology. I've got my router one, two, and three here. I've actually brought up a lab from a previous lecture that we did for the routing. All that I've done is extend or increase the addressing between our routers. So before it was just slash 30s between our networks. Now we're using slash 29s just to give us additional IP addressing to play around with. Now, if we think about NAT, we need to first figure out why do we need to talk about NAT. And NAT, I think I brought up when we discussed uh, masquerading on a microtech device and it is a mechanism that was developed to help fight the starvation of ipv4 addressing because what natting allows us to do is we can essentially hide behind a specific public ip address whenever we use private addressing so not every device needs to have a public ip address the same goes for the services when we think about destination nat uh, what destination that allows us to do is traffic can get to your router and then your router can forward that traffic off to a specific server so that each server doesn't in essence needs to have its own individual public IP. Uh, the, this, this is more or less like port address translation where you can map certain ports. So we'll have one public IP and then that public IP we could send port 80 and 443 to a web server, but then uh, SMTP traffic we could send off to a mail server somewhere and it would use the same public IP but it's going internally to two different um, IP addresses so that is kind of what destination NAT entails for us and the redirect I, I won't go too deeply in it but redirect allows you to set your router to basically redirect traffic to itself on a specific port so let's say traffic was coming from R2 it was sending a like a DNS request and it would have your let's say your DNS server was Google's DNS. If you performed a redirect on router one, what, it, what you could effectively do is you could take any traffic that was going to go to Google, redirect it to the router itself, and then the router could act as that DNS server or for the, the DNS request off to Google. So that's that's kind of like the gist of redirect. It's it's useful, but it's not often used, but it does have its, its uses. OK, but let's get into some actual configuration. So what I'd like us to do is start off with source-based NAT. And to do this, I'm just going to use router two as an example. All right, I've connected onto Roman on router two, and let's just get into the IP firewall, go to our NAT, and then from the NAT, we can set up a source-based NAT to hide the IP address behind something else. But just to see that it does work actually, let's just do a basic masquerade rule, which we've already gone through in other lectures, but this is just to kind of instill that knowledge. So let's say the chain is a source-based NAT, and then we're gonna say any traffic leaving over ether2, because that's the interface going from R2 to R1. And you can think of that as your WAN, your, it could have been your triple POE as well, it doesn't matter. Um, it's just how we get out of the network. So we're going to masquerade, and then I'm going to apply this. And now what this basic firewall rule will do is any traffic that leaves over ethernet2, so any traffic that comes in, even from the PC, it comes to router2, if it leaves the router over Ether2, then it's going to be masqueraded or hidden as 10.128.100.130. That's the IP address that router1 will see. So we can test this by just going into our terminal and let's do a ping. And let's ping 10.128.100.129, which is router1's IP. But let's ping it as 192.168.0.1 which is the source address of the LAN. So let's just do that ping and we're getting a response. But I wanna show you actually what's happening if I go onto another Winbox session and I go to my router one and I connect. What we can see here is if I go to my interfaces and I go to my ether2 and I torch this, uh, let's just start it up again. We'll actually see there is ICMP traffic. So there is the ping but we see the ping as coming from 10.128.100.130. We don't see it as coming from the LAN address. So that's a source base in that. Now let's just disable that rule quickly on router two. And let's see if it's still the same type of scenario that happens. So disable. And then if I go back to router one, now you see the IP address has actually changed to the LAN IP. So that is a very basic source based NAT where we use masquerade, but we can specify what address we want to NAT it out as. And that is why I've increased these IP pools between these routers so that I can showcase that as well. So let me go back onto router two and then this NAT rule, let me just delete it. And what I firstly want to do is I want to go to my IP addresses and I'm going to add another address. 
and this address is going to be 10.128.100.131. I'm just going to bind that to Ether2 as well. Actually, what I could do is I could also just add this as a bridge, but let's just do that. Let's add 131. So that's also now a slash 32 that exists on Ether2. And then what I could potentially do is I could go into my IP. I can go into my firewall. I can add a NAT rule. We can leave it as a source NAT. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that, okay, we, we can still say any traffic going out over Ether2. Uh, what we want to do now is we're going to source NAT. So that's going to be our action. So instead of masquerade, we're using source NAT. Now we can change the source IP ourselves so that the remote side sees the IP that we want them to see. And this I'm now going to just update to 10, uh, sorry, 10.128.100.131, which is that additional IP that I added. I'm going to apply this. And now that that's been applied, I think my ping is still running. Yes, it is. If I go back to router one and I torch this interface, I can see traffic is now being generated from 10.128.100.131. So we know that we've actually got the source not working. Why is this useful? Well, let's say if you, let's say these weren't private IPs, these were public IP addresses, and perhaps you wanted to give each customer their own public IP address then that is how you could go about that. You could specify their IP ranges or their VRFs or whatnot, and then you could NAT traffic out as their public IP. So that's that's one like very good use case for public IP addressing and source NATing out as a specific IP. Okay, so that covers source NAT. Let's jump into destination NAT. Now, destination NAT allows us to effectively change the IP address that traffic is being sent to. So I'm just going to use an example. I'm going to say traffic's going to be coming from router one, and router one is going to try and connect to router two, but what we want router two to do is actually forward the traffic to PC one. So PC one should be the recipient of the traffic. The IP address resides on the router. So let's say it's a public IP or it's this WAN address that exists on the router, but it's being forwarded, it's being natted, a destination nat to an internal host. Now this is again why we do stuff for like web servers or mail servers or whatnot. So let's just quickly add that on router two as well. And what we'll do is we'll go into our NAT table, we'll add a new NAT rule. The chain will be destination NAT. And what we can say is the destination address we can specify. And for this, I'm going to specify that same WAN IP that I added on the router. So 10.128.100.131. And we're going to go to our action. And then we can set the destination NAT. So DST-NAT. So if I click on this, we can see we can actually change the address. We can forward it to something else. So here I can forward um, that to 192.168.0. I'm not totally sure the, the IP is dot 10, but we need to set the IP on the host anyways, because let's just test this out and see if it works. I'm going to go into router one and then let's run a ping to 10, 128.100.131. The ping is currently failing, but it's because this PC's IP hasn't been configured yet. And whenever we reboot these VPCs, we just need to re-add the IP. So I'm going to add IP 10 128 100. No, sorry, I, I don't want to add that IP. I want to add 192.168.0.10. <laughs> That's all I want to add. And my gateway will be 192.168.0.1. I'm adding that IP. So the IP address is being added to the VPC. And that should be live now. So if I go back to my router, I can actually see it started responding. So now if I'm pinging 10.128.100.131, it's coming from router one, it's hitting router two, and then router two is forwarding 10.128.100.131 to the internal IP of PC1. So that IP or that host has now been natted down or that IP is natted down to that host. You can also, like I said, NAT specific ports and that you would do by just going into the NAT rule and then you can just specify the ports. So let's say we just wanted to forward port 80 um, and port, <laughs> sorry. So we, we just need to specify TCP as well if we're going to do that. So protocol will use TCP and let's say the protocol port is 80, then we can forward the ports 80 to that as well. So now port 80 will be forwarded to that machine. And I've just copied this to make it 443. 
So this would, in, in the event, if that was a web server, it would forward that web traffic to the web server. And now it's just the one IP. But now I can also basically forward other things, like I said, like an SMTP, like port, let's say 25, to a different host, if there was a different host on the network. So now 443 and 80 would go to um, the 10 or 192.168.0.10, but port 25 would go to 192.168.0.11. So that is destination net in a nutshell. All right, so let's just quickly do the redirect bit. So redirect allows you to effectively redirect traffic to the router. So you could set up a NAT rule on router one, for example, to say any traffic coming from router two that wants to get to a server on the internet, rather just redirect it to me. So it will use your router and you can redirect it on a specific port. That is what redirect does. So let's just add a redirect rule on router one. Let's go to our IP firewall. Let's add a NAT rule. Redirect does fall under the destination at chain. You need to use that. We can specify some protocols. So let's say TCP perhaps. Um, let's also specify the in addresses or in interfaces ether2 because that's the interface that's coming from router2. And let's set our action to redirect. So now we can redirect to certain ports. So maybe I could redirect to, um, let's say 23. So that's a Telnet port. So, and let's just specify destination address as well. So I'll just put this in as 1.1.1.1. So now, in theory, if router 2 tried to get to 1.1.1.1 on a TCP connection, it would just forward it as Telnet to um, router 1. So let's just test this out. Let's go to router 2. And let's do maybe, let, let's say Telnet 1.1.1.1. Or, sorry, we need to do system Telnet 1.1.1.1. And it says connected to 1.1.1.1, but I, I highly doubt that's 1.1.1.1. If I do admin and enter, ta-da, I'm on router one. Router one tricked me. My traffic got redirected to router one. So that is what we can use redirect for. All right, so this will cover up the NAT section. And this is actually all of the firewall that we need to cover for the MTCNA. I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video where we'll be discussing QoS. So let's enjoy, bye-bye.